All right, so thank you all again for joining us. Myself, Baba Shango Dare on the line. I'm gonna give a brief introdu introduction to him. Most of you already know him, but for those who will be uh, introduced to him through this platform, I'll give a brief introduction. So what this whole premise is, is just a priestly discussion going deeper into a read. Last week, um, or excuse me, last month, we did do a class on Ori, and that class about Ori was just basics of introduction to Ori. What is Ori? Or the term Ori me, meaning my head, your head, your divine consciousness, the essence of your being, your destiny, your purpose, and more. Uh, just a brief introduction to, into what we went into last month. So going a little deeper, I wanted to bring on one of my teachers to uh, give us a, a, a more expansive view into how we can look at Ori and how we can view Ori, how we review, uh, how we view Ori, not just through those traditional concepts or Isheshe or what we know as um, the spiritual practices, but even how those spiritual practices can be expanded upon when we look at uh, the Western view i.e. astrology, numerology, so on and so forth. Also adding Odu to give us more reference as how to be able to blend our understandings, to understand that Ifa within itself is a universal language and it speaks through many different dialects and through many different cultures and traditions and practices. So just in going a bit deeper into that. Um, a brief bio of Baba Shango Dare or Baba Akansamo. He's the founder of Gan Philosophy. He most definitely is a teacher, a philosopher, uh, astro numerologist. He's a yogi, an Ifa priest. He is a lot of things, a life purpose coach. He's a lot of things. So of course it is a privilege to sit with you and to be able to communicate and have, you know, sit at the feet of my elders. So most definitely we give thanks to you for being with us today, Baba. Thank you very much, Motukwe, Motukwe, Motukwe. Thank, thank you for having me. Ashe. So Baba, just briefly, give us what your definition of Ori is. Tell us what you, what, how do you de define Ori? Well, the word Ori uh, denotes head, but when you break down the word Ori, you can break it down into O and Ri. Ri in this case is like a verb, it's, it's, a, it's to see. The word Ri means to see. So when you say Ori, you're saying one who has the ability to see. So Ori not only denotes head, but it also alludes to consciousness. Ori also alludes to consciousness. And we understand that consciousness, the mind and consciousness uses the brain as an instrument to have a human experience. So basically my definition of Ori is consciousness. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. So when we look at consciousness, when we understand consciousness, and especially from your perspective, because you're not just an Ifa priest, but again, you're also an astrologer and numerologist and things and so forth. Can we see Ori or can we see astrology and Ifa as being of the same? Um, there's a quote out of the history of religions, divination and deity and African uh, uh, religions from what you shared with me about saying that the higher levels of Fa or Ifa, what we know as Ifa, uh, had nothing at all to say about the demigods or the spirits. So we, and a lot of times we focus a lot upon Orisha. So this goes deeper and it tells us that we were instead about the interaction of the primary cosmic elements themselves. And one was most importantly devoted to astrology. Can you take us a bit deeper into that? Sure. Um, in the Odu, Ogundo Warren, it speaks about who is your Isheshe. It speaks about your ancestors, your mother, your father is your Isheshe. Ifa is your Isheshe. Your Ori is your Isheshe. And it speaks about that you need to understand who your Isheshe is, work with your Isheshe before you even go to the Orisha. So the Orisha are like, uh, really, I like to say Irumale because Irumale is that frequency of light that existed before it manifested in the physical realm as Orisha. You know, Orisha came, I mean, the Irumale came to the earth, but they manifest themselves as the trees, the wind, and all of that in the creation of human beings. So when we talk about, when we talk about uh, things like astrology, astrology is the study of the self. It's, it's a blueprint. It's a uh, written thought pattern that is there to you to be able to understand who you are, what you came here to do, your purpose, 
your behavior patterns, whether they're good, they're bad, your traumas, your previous ex life experiences, and in your present life experiences and purpose. That is the same exact thing that your Odu is here for us, is here for you to, to, to learn from. So astrology, whether it's astrology, numerology, anything that is created or understood to, to give you insight to yourself is a part of the, that aspect that we call the Ori. I sure, I sure. So in essence, astrology, Ifa, pretty much one and the same. In essence, Ifa, astrology, numerology, or anything that enables you to go deeper into yourself is Ifa. Ashe, i.e. universal language. Ashe, we give thanks. So in practice, as like for myself, even yourself, in practice, you've been a great help for me to be able to um, blend understandings pretty much and, and make bridges. Um, so how can one, uh, or how can you help us to understand through this platform, how can one make even further correlations through their spiritual practice from what they know about their own or read through traditional perspective, but then also what one learns from astrology, numerology, and so on. I can just I can give you personal experiences. Um, first of all, your your Odu has at least eight hundred verses, so each mm -hmm. Odu has about eight hundred verses, meaning there are many 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 verses that you don't know. There are many many verses that other Babalaos you could have twenty Babalaos in the room and they would not know probably not know all the verses that go to that that Odu. But what astrology and numerology does, it gives you insight to your blueprint. When it gives you insight to your blueprint, there will be things in your in astrology chart and your numerology chart that you may be able to backdoor in your Odu. Case in point, mm. um, I was in a Ita one day and we had about 10 priests in the world. I didn't focus, I didn't focus on the Odu per se. I let all the other priests focus on the Odu. All I did was look at the astrological chart, the numerology chart of the individual that was having the Ita. All the things, all the things that I told them based upon their astrological and numerolo numerology chart was literally in the different Odus, the different, excuse me, the different verses that the Ifa priest was, was giving information to the, to the client or to the person that was receiving the Ishe Fa. Every bit of it. I mean, every bit of it. And so what I'm saying is, when you understand your astrological chart, it literally gives you insight to your Odu. If you understand your numerology chart, it literally <laughs> gives you insight to your Odu. Why? Because there's an aspect of, of your Uri that's coming from Uri Apede. When you receive your when you receive your mission, when you receive your purpose, there's a there's a thing called there's a term called Adamo. Adamo is what is fixed at creation. When you are born, when you come in and you are born, your birth name, your birth time, your birthplace, all of these things are fixed. When you are born, the stars are in a certain position. When you are born, the planets are in a certain position. So this is what we would call Adamo. This is one of the aspects of the Ori before it comes down to, before it has the human experience. Then we have what we call as Akomo, or some people call it as, Akosile. And it literally is that aspect of your Ori that is, which is written and sealed. So when we study astrology, when we study numerology, we're literally studying the blueprint and the contract that was fixed at your birth. Mm. Okay. Okay. Ashe. Wait, did that make so, sense? So you're telling me that makes perfect sense to me. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just breaking it down for the people who are taking notes. I want to make sure that you guys are taking notes. Okay. Not everything is written down, but uh, anybody who is a practitioner and a student of Ifa, they know that you must have notes. You must take notes. <laughs> so um, taking notes. Please take me back one more time, Baba, and, and, and repeat that for me. When you when you were breaking down Adamo, that's A-D-A-M-O. Exactly. That is what is fixed at creation. I sure. Then you have Akomo. 
some people call it akosile, that which that is that which is written and sealed. Hmm. When you get your astrological chart, we ask, where's the place of birth? Where's the time of birth? You know, what city were you born? What state were you born? What time were you born? You know, what what was the what was the the date? Those things are fixed. Those things determine where the stars, the planets, and all the things that, that is fixed. And so we take that in astrology and we take that in numerology, and we can actually understand the blueprint of that individual. And what is the blueprint of that individual? That is Akomo, that which is written and sealed. Ashe, 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 Ashe. So I this is a that. part, this is a part of Oriya Pere, Oriya Pere, which is your which is the seat of consciousness. As it says in the Odu of Beate, Ori was looking for a wife. Ashe. He went to find a wife. He wanted to find perfection. So he went and married the daughter of Olokun. The daughter of Olokun was Apere. So therefore, Ori married Apere. This became known as Ori Apere, the seat of consciousness, the perfection mm. of consciousness. Why Olokun? Olokun holds, is the depository of all consciousness. Unconscious, super, unconscious, subconscious, and conscious. All consciousness is stored or deposited in Olokun. This is why it says, so and so and so and so was divine for the blacksmith of the Ori. I mean, blacksmith, mm. excuse me, the blacksmith of the ocean. That is your Ori. Mm. Ocean is, is Okun. The owner of the ocean is Olokun. Olokun. Thus, Ori, Ori is connected to that depository of consciousness that is in Olokun. And the daughter of Olokun is Apere. Thus, we have Ori Apere. Hmm. I should. I should. So that's 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 deep right there, Baba. That's 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 really deep. So in going deeper, I want to know. Like a lot of us, you know, we 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 gotta we gotta at least address the elephant in the room. A lot of us we get caught on this Orisha thing. So we want to know who our Orishas are. I'm Shango. I'm Oshun. I'm Yemonja. Can we? Are we able to identify Orisha? Or specifically, more specifically, the Orisha that our own Ori has chosen through aspects of astrology, numerology, so on and so forth. Well, I, I would say this. This is what one of my teachers told me. If you want to understand who is your guardian, you, you must go to E5. However, okay. however, there is a there are uh, certain methods and techniques using numerology, certain lineages can identify. Orishas that walk with you, that came with you at, at birth. It's called the five poles of the Ori. There's an Ori that's connect, you connected to your ancestors. And then there's an Ori that's in front of you, behind you, to the left of you, and to the right of you. And that particular technique can be determined based upon a form of numerology. <laughs> I say, I love I love you, Fa. I love you, Fa. It really speaks the universal language. And we know that numbers is our universal language. The stars are our universal language. We, so we, we give thanks. So when we talk about Ori and when we talk about astrology, when we talk about numerology, of course, we understand um, past, present, future, and karma. Yes. And in, in both of these instances, I want to focus more upon karma, right? So when we talk about karma, there's an isheshe term, osunwan, and this is what I got from you, which translates a scale that measures or weighs our actions of good and bad. Can you take us deeper into understanding uh, or, or in, how, in how we can understand karma through, um, through Ifa or through the concept of Ori? Okay. Um, well, first of all, karma is a Sanskrit word. It just means action. But osunwan, osunwan, is a Yoruba term that actually means it's a, it's a scale, it's a proverbial scale. The actual word for scale is Osunwon, but Osunwon is a, is a scale that measures or weighs our actions. So it's based upon our, our character. It's based upon previous actions of our character in other lives that determines 
what we're going to be, what type of experiences we're going to have. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, this is a major debate is, that is, is there, are there, is there karma in Isheshe? And you mm -hmm. have these people saying, oh, there's no car karma, does not exist in Isheshe, because karma is not a, it's not a, uh, uh, Yoruba word and karma. Do you believe that we come back as animals and all this other stuff? All of that is is a distraction, because it is at its core, karma just means action, and it is your action that determines what type of judgment you have. This is why in the Yoruba in the Yoruba culture, there's a there's a proverb that says, "Oshunwon Oshunwon rela ofishe adijo or idajo re." My Yoruba is not the best, so but I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to say with the phrase. It says, Oshunwon, Oshunwon re la ofishe idajo re. And that means through your actions, judgment finds you. So it is our character that determines how we navigate through our contract. Because remember, we have a contract that an aspect of it is fixed. An aspect of it you can't change. You cannot change who your mother and your who your father is. You cannot change the time you were born. You cannot change the the place you were born. You cannot change those things. But you what you can do, you can expand and contract your blueprint based upon your actions, based upon your choices, and based upon your choices can determine how high you go. As the saying goes, your attitude determines your altitude it's like in the movie it's like in the movie uh minority report where they had the precogs and they were able to predict certain uh, uh events and, uh, and and outcomes but in the movie they showed you if you understood the blueprint if you understood the scenario there were certain choices or choices that you could make that could alter that could alter your destiny. So imagine mm -hmm. having, imagine having a, a script, like a movie script, and you are the writer, and you decide that the movie is still going to be the same, the script is going to be the same, but you have like multiple outcomes based upon, you know, as you go through the script. And so as human beings, we have a blueprint. But based upon our choices, it can determine which way, of, what conclusion we can have based upon our actions. Because we have multiple, we have an array of conclusions that we can have based upon our blueprint. But our choices, our actions, our character can determine which conclusion out of the array of conclusion that can be had based upon our blueprint. I, sure. so I hope that makes sense. Why um within the tradition we focus primarily upon um iwa iwa good character exactly. gentle character we have to focus on character because um at the end of the day it is like you're saying our choices that can dictate how we achieve that end goal that destiny so if we want to have the things of your reign long life good health wealth and abundance we make sacrifice if not we choose not to make sacrifice and it brings us destruction so Definitely. So even going further, Baba, um, as you um, were speaking of some Odus, um, another Odu, again, as you have given me throughout the times of teachings that we've had one-on-ones, Oya Kumeji, that tells us that, you know, in all of our problems and travails, we always consult our inner self. Um, my inner self is always the most reliable consultant. Give us more into this view about this inner Ifa and this, this connection with our own divine consciousness. For I know this is something that you really primarily focus upon in your teachings. Well, your inner self is, is your inner self, your Ori I, Inu, is connected to your Ori Apedic. Your, your Ori Apedic knows your destination. It knows the, the, the potential that you have. And so one of the, Within this Odu, Oyeku Meji, uh, a particular Baba Lao went to complain to Arumila that he had no he had no wife, he had no children, he had he was broke, he was poor, and he was going. He went to Arumila to you know to complain you know what's going on. Arumila said, 
go to Eshu. So Eshu, he went to, he went to Eshu and Eshu said, ah, you're you went to Arumila to complain. He says, the things that you're saying that you do not have, Ifa is not lacking. And so Eshu told him, don't come to me, go consult your inner self. And when he consulted his inner self, all the things that he was looking for, he received. He received mm -hmm. money, he received a wife, he received children, so he had a family. And so at the end of the verse, it says, now in all my problems and travails, I will always consult my inner self. My inner self, you are the only reliable consultant. And what this is saying is that when you, when you study the Odu, Ogunda Turupon, mm -hmm. it speaks of, it says, wherever you are, blame your God, your Ori, because it is your Ori that puts you where you are. Whatever event, good or bad, it is your Ori that puts you there. So when you go to your inner self, you're going, you're going to your Ori. Why? Because it is your Ori that dictates where you end up. It is your Ori that wrote the script. And when we get mm -hmm. into modern science, we understand you have the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind writes down everything that you have done in this life and in the previous life. You've created thought patterns that are continued to have loops going over and over again. But it is through your consciousness, understanding the thought patterns, you can go in and start to modify those thought patterns. And in doing so, you can actually start to elevate and rewrite or rewire aspects of your ori. Okay, wow. Baba. So in essence, is that the true way of how we burn karma, quote unquote? Y yes, most definitely. This is, see, everything, when we say, when we say our head, there's an aspect of our head we call ori iwaju. Iwaju mm -hmm. means future. Iwaju is eye of character. Ori is consciousness. It is taught that when one focuses, when one focuses, focus on your th third eye, what we call Ori Iwaju, you are able to burn karma. Why? Because this is your Ori. It mm -hmm. is your Ori that created the karma. So you can mm -hmm. burn it through consulting your own self. This is why it says in the Odu Oyeku Meji, my inner self, you are the only reliable consultant. This is why I said in Agunda Warren, it says you need to deal with your Isheshe before you even deal with Orisha. You don't, Orisha, Orisha is there to assist you in your elevation, but you need to awaken your Uri. You need to awaken what we call, we need, you need to awaken your soul to be able to, to discern of what you're even asking for. Mm -hmm. If you ask for a car, Orisha will bring it. If you ask for a house, Orisha will bring it. If you ask for women and children, the Orisha will bring it. But what if it's not even in your purpose to have the things that you're asking for? Ashe. You need to go to your head. Ashe. So um, in many ways also, we know that in what you're saying, even Orumala, the systems of the divination throughout Ifa, all of that, all of what it encompasses it, it really is just the path or the highlight to bring us back to the path that we've already chosen. Exactly. Uh, because without that, we won't have anything. <laughs> so that's the importance of, of Ori. And that's really why I wanted to go into a deeper view of Ori um, outside of the basic fundamental introduction for what it is. So in going even further, um, we know uh, many of us have had our astrological birth chart. So in making certain uh, correlations to how one, let's say if they've gone through their Shefa ceremony, Tefa ceremony, uh, whatever ceremony that they have gone through for, for so, some sort of elevation and they receive an Odu, mm -hmm. how can we connect that to someone's own personal birth chart? Well, I mean, like I said previously, if I'm looking at that, if you understand, if you truly understand your birth chart, your strengths, your weaknesses, your likes, your dislikes, the energy patterns that you are continue to, to repeat. When you study your old dude, you're gonna be studying the same thing. I mean, the same exact thing. In my, in my uh, astrological chart, it basically tells me that I am an occultist. 
I am one that would be interested in astrology and numerology and divination and, and would be one who would be a, uh, a, a researcher, one who would love philosophy, religion, spirituality, love to travel. All of those things, all of those things are in my old do. Mm -hmm. But the difference is with my old do, because this is an oral tradition, I have to seek out to find the verses that go with my old do. Mm -hmm. So in my Odu, Obaratura, it speaks about, it's called the lighthouse. One who gives other people the ability to see. The one who is to be always vigilant, to be able to teach others to, to, to be awakened. The word, the Odu, Obara, uh, tu, is called Tua Laya Lali, Lala, which means one who germinates vividly, which means when people come in contact with me, the things that I may teach, the things that I may know, they will, they will start, thing, light bulbs will start going off because that's, that's my purpose. That's my destiny. That is what I came here to do. But if you study my astrological chart, it's going to tell you the same exact thing. And, and if truth be told, if you truly know your astrological chart, your numerology chart, more than likely, you're going to know more about yourself than you will by receiving an eta with your Odu. Not that it's not in the Odu, is that it's going to take you more, it's going to take you over time to learn more verses of your Odu that's going to basically sh share the light that the astrological and the numerology chart had already shared to you. Now, because, right there, Barbara. Okay, go ahead, please finish. Because, because why? It's not that it's not that it's not in the Odu. It just hasn't been revealed because you don't know the verse. When you study in astrology and numerology, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of written documents. When we study our Odu, we, there's, I mean, even though it may seem like there's a lot of books on Odu out there, it's really not. It's really not. It's right. really not. Even if you know 20 verses of, of your old dude, there are, there are like 780 left out there. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to find tools that can assist you on your journey. Your old dude is very important because not only is it your contract, it has a name. And when, you ha when it, ha it has, not only does it have a name, it's, it's, it's a sign. You can mark that sign and that energy can come. You can invoke that name of your Odu and that energy will come. Now, ast your astrological chart, what you gonna call? What you gonna say? Come, Chris's astrological chart? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not here to say astrology and numerology is superior to, to Odu. That, that's, from the con that's far from the contrary. I'm, that's, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is there's much more information out there right now for you to use it as a tool to complement your Odu. Okay. Because it's going to give you the same information. I should. I should. Definitely, Barbara. Um, and again, the highlight is this understanding Ifa through its universal language. Yes. Definitely. And not being uh, linear in, in any way before we know Ifa to be non-linear, most definitely. So one thing that I wanted to emphasize on, because uh, what you were talking about is uh, things not being revealed to one. Um, and many times, um, I'm, uh, as we've had this conversation uh, 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 numerous of times, um, and some of the most difficult challenges is, is when we are doing ceremonies for people and when we are um, giving people their Odu and their different, and, you know, their different implements through ceremony, um, Shishefai, Tefa, whatever that looks like, a lot of times people feel that that one monumental moment is the moment where they're gonna get all the information that they need to connect all the puzzle pieces to their life. Uh, give us some more emphasis on what it really means to, to put that time in and how that, time, how that time or how those revelations that come through time actually equates to the work that we put in. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, this is, this is interesting. That I, I remember back in, uh, I wanna say, I think it was 2006, it might've been 2006, maybe 2007. Um, I, had a, I, was, I was interviewed by this young lady and she asked me what I felt like my, my purpose 
was. And, and this is before I was even initiated, you know, as a, as a, a Ifa initiate. I, I was an Orisha priest at the time. And I told her my purpose, I believe, was to bring the esoteric wisdom to the priesthood in America. Mm -hmm. Now that may sound arrogant, that may sound egotistical, but that's what I said in 2006 or 2007. Fast forward to 2020, fast forward 13, 14 years later, I am communicating with one of my mentors in Nigeria and he starts speaking about my Udu and he literally chants a saying that says, the one who is always vigilant, the one who is the savior of the, of the priest, of the Awo, the one who is the savior of the priesthood. I damn knew, I floored, I was floored. The reason I was floored is because that's what I said my purpose was in 2006 and 2007 before I even had the Odu that I have now. Mm. And so what I'm saying is it is a life journey. You're gonna learn, you'll learn more about your Odu as you continue this journey. Little by little is going to be revealed to you, but you gotta study. You gotta, you have to ask questions. You're not going to receive the things that you wanna receive by sitting back and doing anything and complaining and say, oh, my teacher is not teaching me anything. You gotta have, you have to be more engaged. You have to start asking questions, you know? I mean, yes, it is the Aluo, the Luo, one, one of the tasks of the Luo is to help you learn more about your Odu. But at the same time, you need to be one who is engaging and is truly seeking. As it says, the impeccable question will always bring up impeccable answer. But if you don't ask that question, do you think you're gonna get the answer? <laughs> no. Ooh, come on, Baba. Ashe, Ashe. So uh, last, last thing on this topic right here, when we talk about connecting our personal Odus to our personal birth chart, um, when we, a lot of us have experienced several different ceremonies. So would you say that, um, you know, it, it, there's a difference, you know, how some people in Isheshe would say that, well, if you have Ishefa and then now you have Tefa, you can get rid of your Ishefa Odu. But for me, I, I still abide by things that are in my Ishefa Odu because I still see how they apply. So would you say that it, it matters or it, 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 these are just more puzzle pieces to connect your own personal puzzle? I would say that your Ishefa Odu, your Ishefa Odu is very important. It's giving you major pieces to the puzzle, major mm -hmm. clues to the to the to, to be solved. What if it's your Ishefa Odu? It's very important. If it, even if it's an Odu that's coming with Orisha, like if you receive Shango, mm -hmm. this is your Shango Odu. Those Odus are playing a role, even if that Odu is playing out for a specific time period. It's still in your blueprint. Now, now, if somebody said, what is more important? My Shefa Odu or me knowing in and out my astrological blueprint? I would say you need to know both, but you really need to know that astrological blueprint because there's information about you that's in that astrological blueprint that may be beyond your Shefa Odu because you have not gone and, got, and and was initiated to Ifa to receive your old due. Mm. Mm. Now, that doesn't say that the Ishefa Odu is irrelevant. It is most definitely relevant. It's most definitely relevant. But at the same time, you want to get as much information about yourself as possible. Everybody didn't come here to be a priest. I see. And I think that's what the problem is. People come into this system and they want to become a priest, but they don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. They want to be a priest, but they're not even nowhere near ready to be a priest because to be a priest means you came here to serve. How can you be a priest and you're not serving? What are you bringing to the table? What are you doing for the community? You a priest and you're not doing anything for the community? That's just my, I, my pet peeve there.
Sorry. Yeah, we 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 most definitely won't go there right now. <laughs> we can go into a whole nother subject topic, definitely, and we will at a later date. But okay, so definitely, so Ishefa, Tefa, whether it's Orisha, Sode, whatever it is, most definitely, it it all ties within um, my personal birth chart. Now, one more question too, that it because it kind of leads me to another question. Now, I've been on the mat with you when when we're doing ceremonies. Yes. And I've seen you break down Odu. I've seen you break down numbers. I've seen you break down people's personal charts all in one. And um, sometimes I feel that the wealth of information that we give sometimes maybe it's too much for people to really be able to encompass it all in one. It's just like if you give somebody a reading and that's the first time they got a reading, you still may want to give them a week or so to maybe call you if they got some questions so that they can find some clarity and whatnot because things come up, definitely. Um, so one thing that I, what, what my question is, is that do you feel that maybe um, sometimes in, in the breakdown, just to help one to be able to understand the real breakdown, if I'm giving you information that primarily I'll tell you, okay, your taboo is duck, don't eat duck. But you don't, are you still trying to figure out, well, what's my life's purpose? And one may not understand that, well, it's eating duck that will send you away from being able to know what your life's purpose is. Exactly. Can you just break that down a little bit more for us so that we can have a better, you know, a little bit more clarity? Well, it's interesting that you would use that, that example because, you know, if I'm looking at an astrological chart, I'm not going to say you got a taboo to eat, a uh, taboo. Uh, against eating duck because right, right. I'm looking at an astrological chart I'm I'm not I, I'm not going to see that like that but if I'm looking at an old dude I may be able to see that and so that's mm -hmm. why that's why that old dude is very important because it's going to give you your taboos um so you're right sometimes we have to use some discernment of of how much we give individuals on the mat because they may not be ready for it it's 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 even in an astrological chart i'm not going to give you everything i mean because for me to give you everything we'll be there for we'll be there for a few days so it's not even practical to do that you want to give them pertinent information that's going to actually help them at the time you know to, to, to learn to learn what's going to happen to you in 15 years it's, that's not pertinent to you right now so um so yeah, I think it's very important to really zoom in on um, what is important for that individual. That's what's going to help them. Maybe, maybe they have gone through certain traumas um, in their life and you can give them you know, some answers to how to deal with that trauma or even, even identify traumas that they didn't even realize they had trauma. You know, so uh, I don't know. I, I hope I asked you a question because I know I just went on a tangent, but you was asking about being on the mat and and Given, given information on Odu and... No, you, you most definitely answered my question for me, Baba, because yeah. um, it is a very broad question. And you did answer my question and being more specific about, you know, how that breakdown looks, because uh, sometimes I feel like people don't understand that you want to know this big question. You want to know what is my purpose? And we're not focusing in on all the other small things that are keeping us from even being able to value ourselves enough to know our purpose mm -hmm. you know because a lot of us knowing our purpose and having confidence in our purpose is having self-worth and value in ourselves it's it's That's deeply true. rooted within that so <laughs> most definitely that answers the question someone asked the question in the chat they asked uh, what about time of birth if someone doesn't know their time of birth can the, the birth chart still be valid yeah well i mean if we don't know Astrologers will, if you don't know the time of birth, there are certain techniques which can be used to try to narrow down, you know, uh, uh, a closer uh, proximity. And but how I how I do that is because I'm an Ifa priest. It, because I'm an Ifa priest, I will use Ifa to try to narrow down the time. Mm -hmm. So so that's one way of doing looking at it. But I also have other astrological methods that I don't even need to know the time of the birth. And I can give you an astrological uh, reading and explanation without even knowing the time of birth. And not even, you know, I don't need to know your time of birth in certain aspects of astrology. I don't need it. I shall, I shall. 
Wonderful. So just to let everybody know, tuning in, most definitely you can ask your questions. Please drop them in the chat and we'll have a time at the end of everything to go further into any personal questions in the chat, all right? So moving forward, I most definitely have a example for you because I, I, I need you to go a bit deeper with this. Give us some examples now on making some further connection with personal chart and personal Odu. Now, I have an anonymous person here who this is a, a birthday of April 5th, 1973. They were born at 4.48 a.m. And their personal Odu is Oshe Turupan. How would you make some correlations for them, Baba? What would you say to this person? What kind of correlations between uh, the language when we talk about how, how you and what you see through numerology and astrology and what you see and know through Odu? Because most definitely there is a language barrier that speaks the same thing, but yet it's, 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 it, it comes in different terminologies. Okay, well, the, this numero this 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 uh, numerology piece here is limited because it's the life path. It's just the life path, but the life path is the most important category and number. So I'm looking at here. This is what April fifth, nineteen seventy three. One and nine is ten. Ten and seven is seventeen. Seventeen and three is twenty, which is a two. So I have four plus five is nine, and nine plus two is an eleven. But that tells me this person is a very spiritual person, a very gifted person. The person may even be very, may be well, have psychic ability, very intuitive. But that, that, that life path of 11, sometimes this person can fall to depression. Sometimes this person would have relationship difficulties and they would need to learn how to set boundaries in their relationships so they could function the way they would need to function. And then you have, uh, looking at, looking at uh, the challenges that may occur. What you do to do the challenges, you can you look at the difference between the birth, the birth month and the birth day and the birth and the day, the day and the year, and then the difference between uh, the month you're born here is April and the year you're born is 1973. The difference is a two. So that's telling me the challenge too, again, says this person would have difficulties at times in relationships and they would need to set boundaries. But at the same time, they would need to learn patience. They would need to understand um, that even though they may be going through certain cycles, that it's just a cycle. And they, and they have the power to rewrite that particular script and vibrate on the highest aspect of it. So this person is very intuitive. This person's challenge is relationships. That's just from the life path. I mean, I don't need to see the other, birth, uh, other aspects. As far as the birth time, that tells me nothing because I don't know where she was born. I don't know, um, I don't know, you know, yeah. I don't know where she was born. I don't know the place she was born. So that doesn't give me information. Okay. Now the Odu, Oshe Turupon. Oshe Turupon is an Odu that says, this individual is a, in a relationship. The theme is relationships. And it speaks about uh, that fertility is good. Good fertility, prosperity, but, but this relationship that may bring uh, uh, some uh, goodness, some prosperity, but it also says it's difficult. And so when I see this old duo, Shea Turupon, I tell the client, the relationship that you may have with people, you may be benefiting from these relationships, but you must learn how to set boundaries. You must learn how to set boundaries because in not setting boundaries, the relationships that you have with these people are actually blocking you from reaching your full potential. They're actually blocking you from reaching your, your purpose. It's almost, like, it's almost like an astrology where you have a south node in the seventh house and a north node in the first house. The seventh house represents relationships. The south node represents the things that you brought into this, into this world and that you would be conditioned to gravitate towards. So you would be conditioned to be doing for others. You would be conditioned to be serving your relationships, but your destiny and purpose is in your North Node, which is to embrace your individuality, which is in the first house. And mm -hmm. so when I see this Oshe Turupon, I would say you need to set boundaries in your relationships. You can benefit from these relationships, but you must learn to set boundaries in these relationships and embrace your individuality. <laughs> So it's, okay. the theme is relationships in both, in both cases, the themes are relationships. Relationships. 
So I just wanted to read uh, the oracle, Oshet Tutupan, uh, out of the sacred oracle, uh, Baba Ipega, uh, oracle number 242, Oshet Tutupan, and it speaks a relationship that is difficult, even though it may be fruitful, it says the client is involved in a no-win relationship. So yeah, got you, Baba, <laughs> got you, <laughs> making the connections, definitely making the connections. So uh, next, just in going forward and talking about how one can enhance their own spiritual work, particularly with one's own read. You have uh, something that you have put together that you call the Itaji Ori. Can you explain that more to me and how, or to us, and how that actually helps one to be able to add more spiritual practice mm -hmm. um, and more intent into their work? Okay, uh, uh, Itaji Ori, me. Itaji means to like stimulate, to awaken. Ori is, is consciousness and eni is for uh, enion, which means human beings. So itaji ori ni means the awakening of human consciousness. And in the English, we, I, I call it a uh, Christ seed report. And this particular report gives you the times when certain portals are opening and closing based upon your own divine blueprint. The best times to go to Ogun, the best times to go to Yemoja, the best times to go to Oshun, the best times to go to your ancestors based upon the, the divine blueprint that you came here with. The Itaji Orini uh, document is based upon your astrological and numerical blueprint. And understanding those blueprints, you understand which Orisha to go to based upon the portal or energy that's being activated at the time. <clears throat> so it can enhance it. You will know when you know when to do something and when not to do something, based upon your own ori. Mm, I should. So within this, do you focus a lot upon meditation, or is it an actual ritual? What does that uh, look like? In the report, there are times to do certain meditations. In the report, it's time to do certain rituals with a certain orisha. And those rituals, those rituals, those they don't have to be extravagant. They can be just as simple as going to the forest and, and, and doing libations and, and giving Ogun some of his foods and some of his, you know, some of the things that, rem, that represent Ogun. There may be a time where you need to go to Eshu. This is for people who don't have pots or any influence. Somebody may, uh, it may be a, a, a good time to communicate with Eshu to open the way. You can go to a crossroads, give three pennies, maybe, you know, give, pour some palm oil, some honey, some gin, do your offerings there, give some food to the homeless. So it gives you, a, it gives you uh, uh, instructions on when to do things based upon your blueprint. You know, like say for instance, when we do uh, Oshé Ifa, when we, do, when we use the, the Ifa calendar, it speaks about on this day Obatala, on this day Oshun, on this, I mean, on this day Obatala, on this day Ifa, on this day Ogun, on this day Shango. That is for the, that is for the collective. That is for the collective. What about for you? Mm -hmm. In other words, you're going to Ogun because this is Ogun's day. What about going to Ogun when Ogun in you is being activated? <laughs> you've, just taken, you've just taken the realm of religion and brought it to spirituality. Religion is created for the masses. Spirituality is for the individual. I should. Say that one more time for me, Baba, please. Religion is created for the masses. Spirituality is for the individual. Religion teaches, the religious teachings can teach you, it gives you a blueprint on how to reach your, your higher self and how to reach your destiny as far as a general blueprint. But what about the individual? That's why Odu, that's why your Odu and your astrological numerical chart is important because that Odu is specifically to you. But I'm gonna give you some more things to think about. How many Odus are there in Ifa Quartz? 256. How many people on the planet Earth? <laughs> right, billions. But how many people have your astro numerology chart? Right, right. Even if you say this person, even if this person, say you had twins, right? And 
It came out of the mother's womb. One came out five minutes earlier. Automatically, they're going to be different. Mm -hmm. Right? But they're going to be very close, but they, they're going to be different. They're going to have different names. So they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be born in the same place. They're going to have different names and they're going to be born at different times, even though similar. This individual would have different old dudes, right? Mm -hmm. What if somebody, and this is true, what if somebody, an individual was born at the same time, same place, but they're going to have what? Different old dudes. But what if somebody has your old dude? Say you got it, say your old dude is Ogbeate. You are Nephi priest. This other person has an old dude. Ogbe, Og, Ogbeate, they're Ifa priests. They're totally different. They may have similar experiences, but they're going to be different. But if you find somebody that's born at the same time, same place, same name, that's when it's going to be really like. So, it, in essence, what I'm trying to say, when you have 256 Odu, the interpretation of that Odu, you have you have variations in the interpretation of the Odu, but you have 256. But you but if somebody was to do an astro numerology chart for seven billion people, you would have seven billion different charts. Definitely. The reason I say that is because this person may have been born at the same time. This most person may have been at, born at the same place, and they may have the same astrological look like the same astrological blueprint. But they don't have the same name. They don't. They don't have, and they're not going to have uh, the same blueprint experiences. Correct. Because if they don't have the same name, they're going to have. They're not going to have the same essence cycles. You're not going to say they have the same essence cycles. You're not going to have the same experiences. The books are going to be different. Even though, even though you may have the same Odu as somebody, you still don't have the same book. You just have the same topic. <laughs> think about what I just said. You just have the same topic. You don't have the same book. I see. I see. Hope that, that, hope that makes sense. sense. That makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. So um, with this report, um, a question that I wanted to, to ask you to go a little bit further with us on is, uh, please stress to us the importance of um, one building or cultivating personal spiritual ritual for themselves. For myself, I always tell people that spirituality, spirituality within itself has nothing to do with dogma, religion, anything. It's just more about your own personal relationship with your own spirit. So with that, to me, I understand that the cultivation of my own personal ritual is very important, is very important. Can you give us some more emphasis on that, Bob? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always more powerful if you have your own personal ritual because it's yours. It's not something you memorize. It's not something that somebody told you you needed to do. One of the best personal rituals that I would do it's meditation. Some people may not even think meditation is a ritual, but the most important thing is quieting your mind. And if you have a problem with quieting your mind, you need to learn how to breathe. Because breathing, quieting your mind is one of the most important rituals when it comes to your ori. Now, if you're doing other rituals for other energies or, or extensions of energies from your ori, that's different. But if you really want to cultivate your own spiritual practice, you need to cultivate your ori on a daily basis. And that comes with proper amount of hours of sleep. That comes with drinking water. That comes with learning how to breathe properly. And that learns, and that's also learning how to calm your mind. Because if you calm your mind, you develop patience. When you calm your mind over time, you will develop empathy. You will develop gratitude. Your consciousness is very important. So the rituals, the personal rituals you need to implement are things that's going to affect your character. Not rituals that's going to bring you money, not rituals, even though, don't get me wrong, you need to have things to bring you money because without money, if they, things, it'll be difficult for you to fulfill your purpose. So that's not what I mean. But if you're trying to 
if you're trying to awaken consciousness and bring about a spiritual evolution, you have to do little rituals with your, with your Ori. And the most important, I would, one of the most important rituals is getting proper sleep. Because remember what I said, sleep, dreams, that's governed by Olukun. Mm -hmm. So you wanna get a proper amount of sleep. That's part of a ritual. If you have a ritual and you say, you know, I'm gonna be in bed by 10 o'clock, that's a ritual. If you say, I'm gonna get up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm gonna do meditation, that's a ritual. If, if I get up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm gonna do some deep breathing, consciously deep breathing to quiet my mind and to and bring balance to my autonomic nervous system, that's a ritual. If I wanna get up and pour libations to my ancestors and to my ori, that's a ritual. So anything that enhances, you know, the quieting of your mind, that is spiritual work when it comes to the ori. Why? Because remember what I said, ori is head, but ori is also consciousness. And it is the brain that is used as an instrument by the mind and by consciousness to have a human experience. And so if your mind is not calm, if your mind is out of whack, you're gonna be disorganized, you're gonna be easily irritated. And if you're easily irritated, you will easily be angered. And all, all of a sudden, all the births of EBs just start coming like, <laughs> like, like, like rain. So the key is to calm your mind. Find rituals for your Uri to calm your mind. And one of the most important ones is knowing how to breathe. Why? God dwells in between breaths. There's a reason why it says, Olo Dumari breathed into man and man became a living soul. But the Yoruba that they use is man, uh, Olo Dumari breathed into man. That's it's Emi, Emi. And man became a living soul, Emi. So there's a play on words. It's, it's Emi and Emi. One is breath, one is that spiritual essence. And so this is the Ifa Corpus way of, of showing you, alluding to the importance of the breath to awaken, to awaken your essence. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Um, definitely uh, just, just in further reiterating and emphasizing that self-ritual, you know, any and all self-ritual to me, when it comes to healing, that within itself is the work. When we talk about do the work, do the work, a lot of times we just throw that out there, do the work, do the work. And I'm finding that people don't know what the work is. People don't even know what that looks like. You know, what is the work? And for me, it's anything that you need to do to heal, whatever exactly. it is that you need to do to heal and to be able to move past certain traumas and, you know, things that don't serve us to be able to move past those things that hindered our ancestors, but we're setting a new path for them to come back and walk through light. That is most definitely the importance to me. Um, one you, of the you, things- You hit it right on You hit it right on the head. I wanted to ask something. You hit it right on the head because number one, you know, we can call upon our head for something, but if we don't identify and, and look at that mirror and see that we're the reason for all our traumas, I mean, let me let me give you uh, what I'm what I'm let me let you know what I mean by that. When when things happen to us negatively, and it's a and it seems like it just continuously happens to us, or if we are born in an environment where it's just violence, you know, we get taken advantage of, and we we get violated, we we can easily point the finger at our environment. We can easily point the finger at somebody else. But if we understand our blueprint, we understand that the traumas that or the atrocities that we have been going through in this life, it, we can see that some of the traumas that we're going through in this life is based upon the, our actions that we did in a previous. Mm -hmm. And so for you to truly um, enhance your spiritual, your Uri work, you got to identify and work on those traumas. And what's important to understand is this. Ori is not, based upon the definition of Ori, the secondary definition of Ori, being consciousness, it's just, it, consciousness does not just dwell in the head. Consciousness mm -hmm. dwells throughout the entire body. 
Sure. So when you have trauma, trauma can was going to be isolated in different parts of your body. Mm-hmm. And so when you have certain pains in your abdominal area, that's a trigger of certain traumas that you may have gone through that you don't even know what the causes are, but you need to work and heal that area. So to piggyback and to broaden what we talk about spiritual ori work, that spiritual ori work may be you calling on that aspect of what I call ori amuniwaye, which is the root chakra, which deals with anything that deals with the pelvic floor. You may have you may have issues with you may have issues with your sex organs. You may have issues with sexual trauma, and that sexual trauma may material materialize or manifest in your sex organs or anything dealing with sexual activity. That has nothing to do. So when you say, I'm going to my ori, which is head, you really are talking about going to that consciousness wherever that trauma exists. And the more information you have about that trauma, the more direct that you can go to to help you heal for that trauma. So ori is much more than just your head. It's your entire being. I share, I share. And and even, even going... Uh, not not deeper, but just bringing it back to the surface. When we think about coming into this level of consciousness, the, the first aspect of consciousness is not just so much like you say in our thoughts, but it's being conscious and feeling what we feel in our body. Yes, I know what I feel like when I drink water. I know how it nourishes my body because I feel it going through my body. I know what this food is feeling like as I'm taking it in. I know what I'm feeling like as I'm listening to the things that I'm intaking. All of these things, being consciously aware of all of the things and ways of how we intake things and how we process the things that we intake, most definitely, that is um, a big thing. Now, when you talk about this report being something that can be valuable for even the person who is of a Mm -hmm. non-initiate, give us a bit more insight into that. Again, I mean, it's based upon you. You know, you just because you're not initiate doesn't mean you don't exist. So. Uh, even people that may not even practice, even people that may not even be in the tradition, if we identify when certain energies are going to be active in you or blocked in you, then we can tell you what to do. If it says, if it says uh, the energy of Ogun uh, uh, is to be activated, I may use layman terms by saying it would be good for you to do X, Y, Z to remove the obstacles that may be lying, lying in your way. But in essence, this, at this particular time, Whatever you're looking for, the way is open. The way is open. It doesn't, if you're somebody who is into Greek mythology, I may say the way is open. You may want to do a prayer to Aries. Mm -hmm. The way is open. You may want to do a prayer to uh, Mars. So it doesn't matter which system. It doesn't even matter if if you don't believe in any of these systems. You could just say during this particular time, the obstacles that it seemed like that have, that have been in your way, the way is open for you. If you may be a time to go to SU, the things things seem to open up for you, you can say, this is a great time for you to do X, Y, Z. You may want to, because, because this is a good time uh, to start new projects and the way is open for you, because that you may have been confused at a time and you may have been at the proverbial crossroads, it is a great time to go to the crossroads and give an and give an offering and say thank you for opening the way for the things that are about to come my way. So it doesn't matter if you are an initiate, it doesn't matter if you are a EFI practitioner or Risha practitioner, all you have to do is be able to breathe and to be able to and, and, and to be able to function and live your life. It, it's 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 remember all of these terms that we're using, it's just terms for our communication. But in essence, no matter what system we're, when that, no matter what system we practice, all it is is the study of mind and consciousness. That's it. The human body. If you study the brain, the spine, the mind and consciousness, that's all religions. That's all of them. What you have done is took the dogma out and went straight to the spirit. <laughs> I should, I should. And that's that's primarily what, what I was what I was asking was, you know, how to be able to tap into these Orishas and not be an initiate, but understand them through their universal language and what they speak, yes. what they represent. So Ogun exactly. is the opener of the way. 
So of course we'll say the way is open for you to do this at this point in specific time. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, lastly, just a question about, you know, just with the times of what's going on uh, more recently in these current times with a lot of, I mean, well, it's always chaos, but we can't know anything in life without chaos. And I feel like sometimes, you know, the emotional aspect of the chaos is what kind of takes us out sometimes because mm -hmm. those are the sentiments that sit with us as we're going through these experiences. So during this, what would you what would you tell somebody as far as in connecting with their ORI, um, connecting with their their higher consciousness to bring calmness or to bring a sense of security and safety for one? For one, I would tell them that you may need to stop watching TV so much. It's a distraction. Okay. You know, you need you might need to stop believing everything you see on Facebook or Instagram. It's a distraction. Not to say you can't watch TV because you still want to have some information, but you 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 would want to kind of quiet the chatter and go within yourself and let your inner self give you the direction. Because sure. remember, our, our experiences outside are when we see the world, the state of the world is the state of the collective consciousness on this planet. Mm -hmm. If you want to change the world, you ch the first step is to change yourself. The next step is to change your family, help change your, fam your family, your environment, your, your community. You can't change the world if you haven't changed yourself. So the first thing, if you want to change the world, if you fear about the world, you must go inside yourself and bring out that warrior that dwells deep inside of you. You can't, you can't fix the world if you haven't fixed yourself. I should. So another reason why we, you know, focus upon personal ritual and things of that nature. So in moving forward, <clears throat> uh, we just wanna give a brief moment for any type of questions in the chat. I did have a couple people who had posted some questions in the chat. Uh, one person wanted to know, how do you get the report? So at the end, I do have um, the credits for Baba with gonphilosophy.com. Most definitely you can go there and all the aspects of how you can reach him in any in any level, because he offers a lot of things, not just the Itaji or Re reports, he offers ancestral reports, he offers all kind of all kind of things. And Baba can go in a little bit deeper with that, um, with what he offers. But just to keep with the questions flowing, someone asks, um, how, how, how can they teach themselves how to calm their mind? And I think you did tap on that a little bit, but if you could just tap on it again for us. Uh, well, for one, I mean, I do offer uh, consultations and and time to help you learn how to do that. But the key is, if it's, if it's difficult for you to, to, to focus, uh, easy, one of the ways is to learn how to breathe and just follow your breath, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and listen, just, just stay conscious of the breath. That's all you do. And you will gradually start to calm down because when you're breathing, it's activating, it's balanced. When you do like what we call a water breath, where say that the inhale count is the same as the exhale count. What you're doing is you're balancing what we call the autonomic nervous system, which is made up of the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And th this nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system can bring you up, the parasympathetic system can calm you down. And so when you're breathing, you're automatically activating that aspect of your being and you automatically will start to calm down. So if you don't know, if you say you don't know how to meditate, you can start by learning how to breathe. And it's very simple. It's very simple. Ashe, uh, another point I wanted to add, a lot of times one may think that um, the aspect of their mind constantly going is a bad thing, but and well, it's, it's in itself, bad. it's actually not. It's not bad exactly. at all. That's what our mind is supposed to do. That's what our mind does. It keeps certain thoughts and re reiterating certain instances within ourselves. We just have to realize that we ourselves are not those thoughts. Um, however, we are the ones, we are the one who is paying attention to those thoughts. So the more that we come into consciousness and awareness um, with what we are thinking and the more aware we become 
of what we are thinking, that is um, an also big piece and part of that meditation as well. Exactly. Um, last, the person, someone asked, uh, what was the Ori name again? Uh, the breakdown? I'm not sure what, what that question is implying. The Ori name. When he was a bro boya when you were speaking of the Ori name um, that governs the root chakra. Oh, Ori Amuni Waye. Ori Amuni Waye. It means the one who brought us into the world. You can find you can find that name in the Odu or Yekushe in the in the. Uh, Baba Pega's book, the Ifa Oracle, and the Odu or Yekushe. Ashe. Ashe, Baba. So, any other questions before we move forward? Any other questions? We all good? Ashe, that's wonderful. So, moving Mark, forward. I got, I got a question. Got a question. Got a question. Oh, okay. Is that, wait, is, 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 is that who I think it is? Yes, that's Baba. <laughs> that's our world. What's going on? What's going on, Baba? What's happening, Baba? Uh, so I have a question. So you receive an Odu at Ishefa. Someone else receives that same Odu at uh, uh, when receiving Shango, and then someone else receives that same Odu for, uh, let's say, uh, Sode. How does that Odu play out? in these people's lives based upon when they received it. Let's use uh, Agunda Bede, for example. Someone receives Agunda Bede at mm -hmm. Tefa. Someone else mm -hmm. receives it in the Shango initiation, but someone else receives that as Sode. How does that Odu itself, without taking in numerology, astrology, all the chart things, all that, how does that Odu, using that particular Odu as an example, uh, play out in each of these person's lives? Man, you man, you make me work hard on that one, man. Um, I can, I would say that based upon the Orisha that you're receiving, because that Orisha you're receiving has a certain archetypal function, certain archetypal, has a certain energy. And so that Odu coming down at that time for that particular initiation may be showing you how you play out based how, how the energy, how the Ogunda Betty plays out in that aspect of, 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 of what you do in your life in that role of Shango. Say, for instance, somebody who get Ogunda Betty as a Shefa, that's more related to, I guess you could say, their, um, it's more in alignment with, in, in a general sense. But when you're talking about getting that Odu for Shango, since Shango represents a certain function, like, you know, you may be somebody that uh, uh, is easily scattered. And you may be easily scattered because <laughs> based upon what Ogunde Berde represents. So it may be telling you that based upon the energy of Ogunde Bede, if you would start focusing on what Ogunde positive aspects of Ogunde Bede, it actually may trigger you to become more organized. It may actually trigger you not to be so scattered. <laughs> and now you asking this question, Am I giving you an absolute answer that I know? No. But I do understand that when I receive certain initiations and I receive certain Odus, those Odus that I received at the time were truly pertinent what was going on in my life at the time in that mm -hmm. as, in that in that time period of my 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 larger blueprint. Mm -hmm. Say for instance, during the time that I, I received Obatala, I got the Odu um, Osameji. This just so happened to be the time period where I was traveling all around the world, all around the world. I was in constant movement, con everywhere. Well, Osameji deals with movement. That, during that time period, I was traveling all over the world. I probably went to like, at, at, in a 10-year in a period, went to nearly 70 countries. Uh, when I received my, when I received Shango back in 2000, when I was crowned Shango back in 2004, Many of the things that I was having problems with was pertinent in that Odu that I, that I was crowned, that I received. But as I continued my journey, I started overcoming a lot of those things 
that that old dude was speaking about. However, that doesn't mean that's not still a part of me. It's just that I'm learning to start to overcome those things. So, but that old dude is still important because, because within my blueprint, that aspect is still somewhat in me. It just may not, it, it may not consume me because I so, learned how to overcome those things. So to follow up, uh, are, are you saying that it's not really about the what you're receiving in that moment, but more about what's going on with you in that moment? You could have been receiving anything and that Odu may have come down because this is what you're going through in that moment. Or if like if you receive soda and this Odu com that Odu comes down, is it more about your relationship that 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 person's relationship with the mothers versus what's going on in their life in that moment or what's going on in their life as it pertains to feminine energy well well i, I would say i would say probably all of the above because i know people that have received so they and they and the odu that they receive actually articulates things that they're they are in their bl larger blueprint mm -hmm. but it's highlighting it actually highlighted what they were going through at that time. But what you're going through at that time really is just a sub, it's just a, a, a subtitle to what you've been going through all your life. Like say for instance, if I, if I, uh, and, and my main old dude, it may say, this person may have issues in relationships. Hell, my first old dude might've said, this person has issues in relationships. So mm -hmm. the core of what I need to work on is still there, but at the same time, when you receive, when you receive another Odu, it's giving you maybe where you are in your evolutionary process, when your evolutionary growth. Because if I received the Odu um, in 2004, based upon the, the Rishi I was receiving, and then I receive another Odu three or four years later, there's a commonality of the message in the Odus. At least they are with me. And all of my Odus, there's a there's a core, a thread that runs through all of them. But at the same time, at the same time, some of the things that uh, that play out significantly in my first Odu, I don't have, I, I don't really have that issue as much as I evolved spiritually, even mm -hmm. though that's, that even though I can still see that in my rearview mirror, but I don't have that issue really pounded down it, if you understand what I mean. No, I got. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that made sense. Yeah, that 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 made sense. But to go back to when when Ia had said earlier about how people say, you know, when you receive Tefa or whatever, you cast the the Odu that you got at Ishefa to the side. And yeah. no, I don't know. You don't do that. Yeah, I, I know. But <laughs> but if that's the case, then that first Odu that you got with Ishefa. If, if the other ones may be dealing more of what you were going through in that now moment, wouldn't that mean that that first one would actually be like overall, the, the, would take precedence over all of them because this is across your life. If you understand what I'm saying? If, if, does that make sense, what I just said? I, I think I know what you're trying to say, and I don't agree with you. Saying, so you you saying it's safe? I'm asking. I'm not, I'm no, asking. no, uh, 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 uh. Because when you when you go in, when you get your old due for that particular initiation, you're getting that old due for that particular initiation and what that initiation represents. Mm -hmm. If you get if you're getting an old due in Itefa, this is supposed to this is representing your purpose and your destiny. Mm -hmm. So that old dude that's coming down is more in reference to your purpose, your destiny, your blueprint, all the above. When you're getting an old dude for Shango initiation, you're getting an old dude. It's giving you insight. It's giving you the things that you need to work on. But is that old that old dude that came down? Is that for your purpose and your destiny, or was it for you to receive Shango? It was to receive Shango. So, but you, the one you get at Ishefa, if you never. If you never if receive, if you never that, get it, if you never go to Itefa, that's the only thing you have, and that is why I said it's important to get an astrological and a numerical chart or any modality that can give you a, a broader picture of your to, you, of your totality. If you only have a hand of Ifa Odu. can I say something here, Baba? 
um, I think it's very important that we understand that in many instances, it is our experiences that bring us to Ifa or to Orisha. Um, and in many instances, it is our experiences that bring us to these aha moments in general. Yeah. These awakening moments in general. So when we receive these certain, this is just how I see it. And tell me, you can correct me and flow with me. But when we receive certain odus, um, or when we receive certain ceremonies, and we get these odus that come through these ceremonies, yes, they a lot of times they speak directly to our circumstance at that moment. But we don't. Sometimes we never make the the correlations as to how those circumstances are monumental to why we even have to come to Ifa, exactly. or why we even have to come to Orisha. And how they continue to apply is through the aspects of self mastery. Exactly. Because if we are mastering, then we understand that it's no just one fix all. It's levels to this. It's like the onion. We peel back one layer and we go to the next, and we go to the next, and we go to the next. You know. So, um, because in many ways we have so many symptoms that are being caused from this root issue. And mm -hmm. that root issue can never really be solved in just one sitting, in just one elbow, in just one ritual, in just one prayer. You know, we live with this for a lifetime. So particularly those of us who didn't who didn't have the opportunity to receive each shape or any ceremony when we were at a younger age and we came to file once we were older. So this whole thing about self-mastery is a very big thing. And then also the, the instance of how we have to really put this big emphasis on why we had to come to we file. Like for me, if I saved my life, it was evident all throughout my old dues and even through my experiences, I had to learn just how much if I truly saved my life. And I can continue to see the reiteration of that as I continue to go through experiences, how if I continues to save my life for what I don't even know, for what I don't even know that's happening in the background while I'm doing this class. There's many people who's doing things. It doesn't matter. But we're moving forward, you know. Yes. So I think that 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 whole thing, if I have added any other light to what you're trying to say, because I, I think I feel what you're trying to say, is this whole thing about self-mastery is a very big thing. And in many instances, when we have these aha moments, these awakenings, it is the trauma, it is the experiences that bring us to these aha moments. You know, how can one know peace unless they know chaos? How can we have any any aspect of growth unless we know the friction? And the, const the constriction within life, we have to know it. So if that has brought any light to what you were saying, Bob, before I go to the next question, if, if you could, I will. All right, I say, I love you too. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> like, what oh, happened? Yeah, I, yeah, I did but, the... Yeah, that's because it's, it's all thought patterns. Your old, all old dudes are thought patterns. So as you evolve and you and you, and you start to change some of your thought patterns, your old dude changes over time. That's the whole aspect of getting to the point where you can literally transcend your old dude. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation when we talk about how old dude is sentient and living. And it most definitely we, uh, add to that based upon our ability or inability to make sacrifice. So we give thanks. I had one more person who wanted to add a question. It was Ifa Subomi. Yes, um, I wanted to touch a little bit more on the, the meditation because um, I'm kind of in that stage of my life where I'm really trying to get this meditation down. Um, it's come up in like two or three readings, the last reading that you gave me. Um, Baba Dare was about, um, you had spoke to me about meditation and, um, my thing with, with the, with the, the breathing, I can breathe. I think I've mastered that. Um, I can breathe to where I can drown out my thoughts to where all I hear in my head is my breathing, is my breath. But I think what I struggle with is how long am I supposed to be within the meditation? Because after a while, oh. I, get, I get bored with it. Well, I, I put it to you like this. You know, you need to designate that. If you, even if you just say, I'm going to meditate for five minutes, 
meditate for five minutes. If you say you're gonna meditate for 10 minutes, meditate for 10 minutes. It's not, it's, it's not, many times it's not important to how long you meditate. The, the importance is the quality of meditation that you, that you, you know, that you have at, at, at that, at period, in that period of time. Don't get caught up in the length. Get caught up in the, look at the quality. Don't try to meditate so long to the point now your body's aching and you're thinking you're like, oh my God, I'm tired. And your mind starts coming back and you start create, thinking all this. Even if it's just for five minutes, meditate for five minutes. So in doing that and making a practice of that, how, what should I, should I be looking for any type of result? From it within my life should I not focus on that no I mean initially initially I, I would say the objective of meditation is to learn how to quiet your mind to bring more calmness to you to yourself looking for like well, how do I know my meditations are working you know over a period of time you should see where you may actually may start making better choices because you're calmer you're not as agitated you're not as angry but that's that's different for that's different for different people, so it just depends. But the initial objective is to quiet your mind and to so you can have some clarity. It's you know it's just have some clarity. Some if some people if people go into meditation to say, oh I'm I I, mean, I, I want to be able to see things that are unseen, where well, you already going coming in wrong. Remember, when we say meditation, really we hadn't even got to meditation. We're doing the preparatory stages to meditation. When you're breathing, proper breath, that's one step toward meditation. When you're able to focus on a particular thing over a period of time, that's one step towards meditation. Mm -hmm. You haven't got to meditation yet. Everything that you're doing is preparatory stages that lead you to meditation. So then what exactly is the meditation or should I not be concerned about that right well, now? Well, right now, right now, you focus on the things that will lead you toward it. True, okay. medita true meditation is when you are able to stop or what they call the cessation of the mind where the, and all of a sudden there's a void. Even if that void is only for like five seconds, three seconds, Meditation, when there's a void that occurs, where the, there was, there's a stoppage of the thoughts in the mind. That's why I say we're doing, we do preparatory stages to meditation. Mm -hmm. okay. You follow me? I do. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. All right, Barbara. So uh, we appreciate you and your time. We definitely appreciate you and your time. Thank you for sharing with us and going in with us. Um, anybody who wants to, and thank you all for joining. Uh, there were more people who wanted to join. And if you know your brothers and sisters out there who wanted to join, uh, the recording most definitely will be available. So uh, there'll be other links that will be shared with you at a later date and time to help you connect. Um, again, thank you all for tuning in to Divine Inspirations for the Spiritualists. And if you want to reach Baba, Shango Dare, you most definitely can do so at gonphilosophy.com. There you can find all of the different links to connect with him, whether it's through the Itaji Ori report, the Ancestral report, numerology, uh, numerology report, astrological report, whatever it is you look at, he offers a lot. Uh, I don't know, Bob, if you wanted to go into any detail about that. No, I mean, you, you pretty much hit it on the head. I mean, I, I do offer uh, pranayama or breathing techniques so they could sign up for stuff like that. Uh, but the astro the astro numeric, the astro numerology reports, the astrology reports, all of that is there. Um, and, and, and eventually we'll start uh, having uh, courses and classes on those things. I sure. I sure. I sure. So again, Gone Philosophy is where you can find him. For more classes and more details and the things that I'm doing, dameonline.net, you most definitely connect and tune in with us. We thank you again. We want to thank Orisha. We want to thank Egun and Oludumare for giving us sure. the opportunity to have progress and for emotion and to build within this sacred space. And thank you all again. And until we meet again, Odabo.